Okay, so this is part two of Stop Dating Non-Black People Who Are Silent Against the Struggle, Our Struggle. Just in case you missed it, this is actually the second attempt at this because I had to stop the first attempt at the second video because um, I had to go handle some stuff. Now there's um, some interesting comments. I want to talk about that. This might be a three-parter. Um, the elder, they're not interested in our struggle, just sex. Okay, so I like that one. Struggle. Our grandparents experienced a struggle. You're just riding the coattails of having a pity party. You got to make racism these days. When you can't, then you turn Smollett all over the place. I know what that was referenced to. I was around when... <laughs> There were souls crushed, personal institutes, racism, and thank God those days are over. His name was James Beck. I actually um, like that comment. No. And I'm not going to reply because he's half right. No. Uh, this dude named Roy was hurting so... This, oh, God, this is bad. What is hurting so-called black people is not not supported black businesses and so-called black communities not standing up and letting better criminals run free without consequences. But we are also called black people get control of our communities before we start asking others for help. And good guy, that's when we could be successful. And safe and smart because it's dangerous out there. I like his. And the thing is that uh, Roy here, he's about 100% right. Because we don't try to punish our own. We don't try to correct our young. We do everything but that. And another comment. Who wants to be in a relationship with someone who wants, who wants to talk about the struggle all the time? This is from Young Scareman. Alright, let me address that. One, because I'm multicultural, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this lovingly. I want you all to understand one thing. This is probably going to make me one of the biggest hypocrites on the planet. But because I'm mixed, I can actually get away with what I'm about to say. There is not a race on this planet. Blacks, whites, or Asians that have not had some personal struggle. I, and the reason why I put it in those three races is because scientifically speaking, there are only three species of human beings. Caucasians, mongoloids, and negris. Mongoloids are technically what they had considered Asians because of Genghis Khan and the mongrels. I don't think that that is um, a good way of calling Asian people out. I think that you should just say Asians. Instead of mongoloids. That's some bullshit that I read in a science book. Alright. Because they three different um, species of human. Alright. Now me being part of all three of those. Because Native Americans are mongoloids. And let me put that to you the way it is in the encyclopedia that's sitting in my car. Eskimos and Native Americans are of mongoloid stock. That's their way of saying that they came out of Mongolia 20,000 years ago before they smack dab established themselves here as Native Americans. We, as Native Americans, have probably struggled the most of being taken and taken off the land for trying to be generous and sharing it and prospering. Decided, okay, well, we're going to share this land with the Europeans. That would be the Caucasians, who... Overran the whole goddamn place. Had Caucasian slaves. And had black slaves. And some of the Native Americans had Native American slaves. And they didn't have white slaves, but they had Native American slaves. They let a lot of black slaves move in. And also inducted them into the tribe. And then there's also the fact that um, white people had white slaves as well. So every race regardless of who you are right now in this moment has had some struggle so with this person 
young scareman who says he wants to be in a relationship where people talk about the struggle all the time. I have to agree with him on that because, you know, the thing is, you have to address it at some point, but it can't be the focal point of your relationship. The focal point of your relationship, you're black, she's white, hey, the focal point of your relationship is the love you two have. Damn your color. So I understand where he's coming from. And I agree with that. Because you're together because you love each other. Your color has nothing to do with it because love is truly colorblind. However, you know, I'm multicultural. And whatever woman I'm lucky enough to score with, the last thing I'm going to get on her nerve with is how bad it feels to be black. Because black people, as bad as we got it, mixed people, we have it worse. All right? Now, let me explain that before someone gets on here and starts commenting. How do you know? How do you know? I know a couple of mixed people, you know, besides myself, that have gone through similar struggles that I have gone through. I put my struggles up here on the internet. Unless the woman that I'm with brings it up, I'm not going to dwell on that shit when I'm with her. I'm not going to sit there and say, well, you know, if I wasn't mixed, this probably would not happen. Now, I may say it out of anger. It kind of depends on the situation. But given the choice, unless she brings it up, I'm not going to talk about that shit because I got better things to talk about. Now, let's play devil's advocate. Let's say I marry an Asian woman who only wants to talk about how bad it is being an Asian woman because everybody sees you as a hot sex pot from all the Japanese porn that they watch. I get that. And why? Because I also watch a lot of Japanese porn. And I understand, and it might just be me, I really love Asian women. I think they're the most beautiful women on the planet. But external beauty versus internal beauty is a whole different thing. Now let me, I've had my face burnt off. No. So, you know, it's not, um, it's not a theory. It's a fact I've had my face burnt off. Let's see if I can find it for y'all. So y'all don't think I'm bullshitting about that. But I, I literally had my face burnt off. And as bad as that sounds, it's not as bad as it seems. But I've had my face burnt off. And I can't really um can't really describe the um the fact that, you know, I used to think I was ugly. And I continued to think I was ugly until I actually was ugly. You know, when my face got burnt off, I grew up real quick. I learned really fast to be grateful for what I had. You know, because my face literally, literally, and I mean it literally, was burnt off. I'm going to show y'all that if I can ever find the damn thing. It's one thing I hate about technology. You know, when it works, it's great. When it doesn't work, or when you really need something, and you just can't find it, no matter how organized your phone is. You know, if I didn't need it, I'd be able to pull it up like it won't nothing. But because I need it, Cause I want to show you people it's just not popping up I think I passed it there it is come on motherfucker. so I had my face burnt off no that was a first degree burn way back between 06 and 07 it is a reminder to be grateful for what I have because like I said all of this was burnt like right right up in there down my neck my arm still carries the scar. You can't see it, but it's there. If you're close up on me, you can see it. Um, and you might be able to see the outline. Yeah, but it's covered with hair. So, yeah, but right in there it was burnt off because I was trying to shield my face, and it burnt my face. My shoulders burnt. You don't know when you think you're ugly. You don't know what you have until it is taken from you. And to have that taken from me was just one of those things that, you know, it was 
it was a wake-up call. No. It was a wake-up call. Because of all the um, casting calls I went on, and I would hear this all the time. You're not a bad-looking man, Mr. Williams, but um, you're not what we're looking for. And 19 years of that, you know, you kind of get tired of hearing the same shit when you're failing at what you want to do. But the point of the article was, um, people who are dating outside of their race, if their significant others isn't standing up with them, they're basically standing against them. I'll read uh, one more, maybe two more. Um, I'll read the small one first. Um, it seems every day, every race has struggles, good and bad. Perfect, Jared. That was perfect, because that's true. Mr. Carl. We struggle against ourselves. BLM. I have no idea what the... Okay, Black Lives Matter. I'm, I'm up to speed on some things. It is a joke. Because they only really wanted to protest. They can't start with the killings in our streets by our own people instead of blaming everyone else. I.e. the cops... Wherever one of us dies by gunfire, unity and the BMF don't belong in the same sentence. I will actually give Mr. Carl props on that. And I will tell you why, because it's like the longest video ever. Mr. Do uh, Mr. Carl, I almost gave out his whole name, just made a very important statement with that. And because, you know, to be honest... Black Lives Matter didn't really pop up until cops started killing black people. But they neglect the fact that Black Lives Matter before that, then black people were killing black people. And um, they had that little Asian woman that was a miss something or another who lost her crown from making the same kind of statement. But they said that because she made it and because she was Asian that it was racist. But Mr. Carl here is a black man if this picture in his bubble is right. And when I tell people about their bubble... You know, I'm, I'm basically meaning like the Facebook bubble, like in the corner of my screen there. Well, Mr. Carl is right there. I'm not going to let you see his name because I don't want him like having a backlash on me. But the shit he said is real because Black Lives Matter didn't really pop up until Trayvon Martin. And it didn't really pop up until the guy who got choked out and then the guy who died in the police van on the transport to... Um, the police station. Now, granted, all three of them were very important events in black world, in the black community, or however you want to um, contrarily correct me. No. Um, first, let me put a damn right there. Right, let me go on back to that thing here. And, you know, the, the thing with that is, because of what he what I just read, you know, um, um, Mr. Beck did the same thing about the grandparents' struggle, and he was damn right. My grandmother is Native American. My grandmother on my father's side was Native American, and his grandmother before her was full-blooded Cherokee as well. So, you know, they're the ones who had the real struggle. We're basically getting the aftermath of the shit. Because the struggle hasn't really stopped, it's simmered down, and it has its moments where it fluctuates. And people don't seem to understand that, you know. We have had great black moments in history. And then we've had really bad fucking moments in America history. You know. And, and it's the same thing, like, okay, I said this to my sister the other day, my older sister. And I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong, as she pointed it out, because I apparently don't talk black enough. Martin Luther King Jr. gets a holiday, yet Malcolm X does not. His birthday doesn't even get acknowledged. I don't even know his birthday, but there goes how it should be told. I don't know Martin Luther King's birthday, but they get acknowledged. But Malcolm X's birthday did not get acknowledged. And I'm like, okay. See, the thing that difference was Martin Luther King's struggle was for everyone. Well, Malcolm X's struggle was just about black people, which is why Malcolm X doesn't get recognized by the entire United States as what he was. He was definitely a rebel, but he was also one of those underground heroes that you hear about, but you don't really invest too much in, where Dr. King was not just a hero for blacks, but for whites, but for Asians. Well, Malcolm X was really trying to um, 
show everybody the truth about Islam and all the other stuff that he learned when he found out that um, Muslims and other things were also not just black people, you know, that they were very well welcoming to white Muslims and Asian Muslims and whoever the hell else you are in the Muslim community. So when Malcolm X learned this, he got a slap in the face because, you know, he just thought it was about black people. And he found out, you know, well, goddamn. And he wanted to tell everybody, and that's pretty much what got him into some shit. But he doesn't get recognized. I'm going to make another video. Because this is 15 minutes and some